Hi, welcome back to yet another tutorial. So this one now I was talking about in the previous video was that simple basic character I'd like to show. Pretty much it's just a simple character that has roughly about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six main parts, main drawings really. And I only did like roughly about five drawings. All right, not not six, probably about seven. So what I had was I had the head, an arm, a body, and a leg. And I duplicated the appendages. The leg you see, leg one also, and arm one. And also, don't forget that there's a hip. That was what I was miscounting before. So, just to break it down for you, and this is a really simple character, all the information. I didn't put a neck in this one, but my character just does this. He just flaps his arms up and down. Why? I do not know. Just a simple example. Alright, so I kind of want to go into the breakdown of this. And I just want to show you how this character can be controlled. So let's keep those first two keyframes. And I must stop start roughly about there. Just copy this. Paste that there back to normal. Alright, so controls for this character are as follows. I have the torso or the body. And it also has a deformation. And what's nice about this deformation is I can move this like so. And you'll notice something interesting. You'll notice that the arms are, well, they're attached to the body and they seem to be behaving pretty well. And you could make this man really long if you wanted to. You also have the offset, which allows me to kind of lift the entire thing off. And the reason for that is because I've stuck my arms to what's called a kinematic output. Now, by default, when using deformation, if you want to do parenting, you have to watch out how deformations parent deformations. You usually don't want to do that unless you have like a kinematic output. So, for example, I have deformation arm and deformation arm one, both going through being attached through the kinematic output to the body. If I did not have this, and I pull this off, and so now we have the arm attached. If I was to show you the deformation for the arm, you'll notice it's actually way off here. And if I did something like this, you see that my deformation is very, very odd looking. So that's why you wouldn't want to parent a deformation to another deformation. Which is why we use kinematic output. Kinematic output is a way that you can do a deformation without actually deforming what's attached to the kinematic output. So that is why I put the arms there. So another example you could think of is if you had um, done the leg of a skateboarder, and you can think of his um, his knee would have a knee pads. Perhaps you'd like the knees to bend, but you don't want the um, knee pads to be deformed. Now doing something like that is a little bit odd as I've tried it myself. It doesn't exactly go exactly as you want unless you do it correctly. So let me just put this back into the deform the kinematic output and so. <clears throat> so in Harmony 12 you actually have to set this up manually through your node library right you could start in the search type in kinematic output is among the deformation group and you just drag that over here and whatever your deformation is over here you can stick it through another way you could do it is and this is how the previous versions did it they would actually have a button that's called create kinematic output and that would actually be found inside so let's pop these off and show you how I would do this on the inside of a deformation group. So I go to the deformation filters or modules or nodes and I'll just grab the kinematic one, kinematic output. 
and I'll just cut that and go inside the body group and paste it and I would kind of attach this curve here to the kinematic output and attach the kinematic output towards the multiport out and so what you'd see is something like this in the old version you'd actually have an extra node coming out of your deformation that is for kinematic output and so you'd be able to group or attach or do parenting through that one so um quick breakdown just like in the previous video for um doing your rig you want to make sure the layers are in place you don't want to kind of have your layers all over the place um you want to make sure that they are layered properly so that visually the character seems as a whole as you can see i have an arm right here like i mean if i don't like where this arm is you don't want to use the transform tool on the drawing itself because you moving the drawing actually does not affect where the um, deformation goes so something to watch out for if you want to bring up your deformation make sure that you are on this icon here show the selected deformation chain and hide all others so when you're moving with deformation you can use a transform tool to select the drawing that has the deformation and click that button So that's what we have so far. And my leg, if you look at my leg, it's just as how we had it before. Except I don't actually have a toe bend in this one. I just have the foot and I have the entire leg going upward and it's attached there. And so the animation for the leg looks something like this. All right. So this is the basics of a simple rig using deformation so my torso uses a curve deformation from the hip going up my hip is just in charge of everything above well above the hip so the body the arms the head I mean if your character was more detailed you'd probably have a neck and if you had um, a character with colors you could either draw them as a part of the arms or you could actually make them children of the arm layer I just drew these in so that is my little animation there this is how you would do um, deformation um, this is just two ways you can do deformation there is another way and it's really to treat your drawings or your deformation like an envelope so in my tool properties you actually have a bunch of different ones you have automatic mode which is by default one that allows you to either go um, bone or curve so bones are generated by clicking where you want your joints curves is click and drag and you see in this one I automatically create a group if you don't it's actually going to show you all the different um, different parts that make up your deformation or your bones will be seen not in a group but out in the open so if you are just setting up harmony and you have harmony 12 or 3rd or or 14 there's no 13 you want to make sure that when you're on your rigging tool that you have this option the other deformation i wanted to mention was the envelope mode and i'll just add a new layer just to demonstrate it I'll call this sheet or maybe I'll just draw an envelope itself so let's hide this guy and let's just draw ourselves a simple little envelope Smooth this up a bit after flattening. Uh, 
All right, so there's our envelope. And so if I was to use the envelope mode for the deformation, I come here, envelope mode, click on this. And I suppose I should probably color this in, but for now I just click. What you actually gonna do is have a closed area for your deformation. So it's like you click, and maybe I might do a curve here and here. And I might come over here, do another curve, bring this back. Of course, I kind of want to make sure that this doesn't actually fly off. So I might do this and this. Continue from here to this point. Come up here, we'll draw a curve there. And pretty much, when you hold on Alt on the keyboard, you'll see that there's a little circle that says C that kind of connects the points together. So I'm going to just adjust this to make sure that my deformation for this is OK. And once I've done that, I will just, how you say, it's not paint bucket, just fill in a color or something. Let's go with this. Just give it a little brown looking envelope. All right, so now because of that deformation, what I can do, I even just call this ENV, low PE. If I go on this and on my transform tool, I can just grab certain pieces of this. Mind you, it doesn't always it doesn't work exactly as you might want, but I'm I'm gonna assume. That there are options for that. So right now you have bone, infinite influence, influence radius, two curves, infinite influence. So we could say shaped influence perhaps and increase or radius. I'm not sure if that's gonna actually help, but I don't see it helping much. So I guess it's just best to know when to use this. I've actually done a different character where she has on a skirt and the skirt is a plain color so it doesn't really damage the drawing too much rah, 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 rah. Hmm. so that's an example of what the envelope one looks like this is probably not good to use a, something with shapes like this and lines because it will distort what's on the inside but, you know, this is just an example, another example of the different types of um, deformers there are. So we went through bone, we went through curves and envelope. So thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something. God bless and take care.